Today I'm going to tell you my top picks for 10 reliable gold farms. Let us begin. When it comes off to my first one, but this is the Whiptail Farm. Throughout tried and true method over the course of multiple expansions, the Whiptail Farm, using it as a multi-farm with mining and herbalism, has proved to be quite profitable in the grand scheme of things. The route is currently on the screen right now, however I'm able to pull in a decent chunk of gold no matter what expansion I'm in, even with the auction house merge which kind of plummeted everything at the beginning of the expansion however i'm finding it to be quite profitable at this moment in time and overall along with that and along with pyrite ore adding extra value towards that and the little battle pet you do get from the elemental nodes this is actually proving to be quite valuable at this moment in time because i can use this for my vial of the sands however when it comes towards reliability its materials with the auction house merge it just sells really well hence why it's that number one on the list as it is a material farm as for number two with my most reliable gold farm it is the battered hill it's part of my lazy gold making method it's pulling in me in stupid amounts of gold each and every week it's averaging from around about 20,000 to 60,000 gold and has a 0.2 all the way over towards 0.8% drop chance and with the variety of different trash mobs in the pit of Sauron on heroic difficulty I can actually pull in around about two to three of these per week and it just works out really well for me in the grand scheme of things especially when it comes towards making reliable gold each week hence why it's still on my lazy gold making method which is working quite well in the grand scheme of things following on to that you can complete this within around about 17 minutes and within 17 minutes you have a chance of getting a hold of a battered hilt now averaging from anywhere from around about 10 runs equals one lockout with around about three lockouts to every one battered hilt on average however i do get lucky in some weeks and then i actually get like a few more battered hilts but overall the average has seemingly become two per week or two to three depending on the RNG factor. This has worked out really well for me in the grand scheme of things which brings us on to my next one. Now this one is an hourly based gold farm however this is how I like to do it. This is the loaded gnomish dice gold farm required in all doom. Loaded gnomish dice has a 0.01% drop chance. I'm not overly too worried about this because I've farmed this over multiple since it actually came into the game and this is a rogue specific farm where you pickpocket all of the schnotz infantry men now this works out really well in the grand scheme of things especially when you're trying to make gold just making gold with this particular item it's a high ticket item the drop chance is quite low however i'm able to pull in a decent amount of gold with this by doing like an hour's worth of farming on this however when i farm this i generally like to go for the leaders i sap them it keeps them all still and then I can pickpocket them as and when, kill them, and then go on to the next pack. By the time you've gone down to the actual bottom of the stairs of where you're actually farming this, you'll be able to actually, uh, the mobs at the top will have respawned, so you can just get on your mount, go all the way back to the top, and restart this. For me, I farm this until I get one loaded gnomish dice, send it over to my bank, oh, and that's it. Generally speaking, I will get this dice within around about 40 minutes all the way over towards an hour or more depending on RNG and once I've actually got one I'm not going to waste any more time trying to farm that I'll jump over to another farm and this works out quite well because sometimes I've actually gone there and I've got it within about 20 minutes and I'm like right send that over to my bank hole I'm good I'm done with this farm there's no point carrying on if I've already got what I was farming for. Unless I'm going for two, which I'll, if, if you want to keep two on the auction house, then it will take you a little bit more time in order to get yourself started. But generally speaking, I have two on the auction house at all times. So once one sells, I go farm the next one. And I do that until I get another one. Time is not really of a factor. I just, as soon as I get it, I send it over to my bank hole and jump away. Following on to the next material gold farm, skinning is doing really well at this moment in time, especially if you have rank 3 in bloodstained bones and rank 3 in dredge leather. If you go all the way over towards the Valley of Eternal Blossoms within the ends of invasion areas, you can farm up the 
thunder moors which are the wolves and you can burn those down relatively easily for a decent chunk of dredge leather and bloodstained bones. Additional materials do come with this but they don't generally sell very well. You're mainly going for that dredge leather and the bloodstone bones because they bring in the decent amount of gold for that to actually occur. That being said it actually works out quite well in order to gain a decent amount of materials and get fast sales for your returns. Currently as it stands for me it's around about 14,000 gold. This works out really well because about 14k in this current climate for material farms is actually pretty good and Overall, I'm finding it to be a very reliable source because I can literally post it the time I farm it and, I, and with the auction house merge, it's like instantaneously selling. So it generally is one of those really, really good ones in order to actually gain your money fast off of the auction house and then you can just jump back and start farming something else or carrying on. For me, material farms are very reliable when it comes towards gaining gold at this moment in time, thanks to the auction house merge. However, the gold per hour is a little bit low. That's why I'm loving dredge leather, as it seems to have stabilized at a good rate. Next up is our Bastion of Twilight. The Bastion of Twilight, I only go for the Twilight Clutch sister. It comes from the second boss of this actual raid and it takes me roughly around about seven minutes in order to actually clear the entire raid. As you can get the Bound Stream, the Faceless Minion and the Twilight Clutch sister. To do a full clear in seven minutes for items that equal in around about 5,000 gold works out really well and at the moment, it's very reliable when it comes towards selling these on the auction house, as the Faceless Minion and the Twilight Clutch Sisters sell relatively fast. However, the Bound Stream doesn't sell that fast, but it does sell. However, with me, I like to level them up to level 25 and then sell them on the auction house because I can actually increase that gold for that seven minute run and I can actually boost that all the way over towards around about 15,000 gold for seven minutes. It works out really well when it comes towards making gold. Following on to that, we have the sealed term of the season. This was in my other video, so I'll keep the short and sweet. Seven minutes for a lap around a Isle of Thunder seven minutes for two percent chance from every one of the rares from there it's a warlock specific farm so you can only farm this with your warlock i log on every single morning with my gold making method and i just farm that up do one lap log off done and i generally get around about two to three of these per week same with the battered hilt as i stated in my last video last week that being said when it comes towards this it's just been reliable over the years and if something is pulling in the gold and it just works, then there's no reason to just stop doing it if it's working. And for seven minutes per day, I'm happy doing that with my Warlock. Following on to that, we have the Blackwing Lair. Now, Blackwing Lair is a little bit of a weird one because <laughs> you can get a decent chunk of gold from this if you bring a Skinner. Now, skinning all of the mobs, you can get a load of black dragon scales, rugged leather, all thick leather, all that jazz. That's pretty cool. Mainly I go in for Chrominius because he drops all of the blue dragon scales, the red dragon scales, and pretty much a variety of all of the different ones. And that just provides me with items that are not really obtainable that much in game, especially the blue dragon scales as they are, he is like one of the only ways to get a hold of blue dragon scales. So if you farm this on a skinner, you can basically sell those on the auction house for a decent chunk of gold and there's no way, because it's a raid locked per week, it just, it's stable, it's a stable income with that. Trying to build out your gold with all of that, it just works out so well for just gaining a decent chunk of gold in one sitting, especially getting all of the old world recipes and or patterns, along with a couple of bits of mog, but it's really the recipes, the skinning materials, and the 0.2% chance from Nefarian at the end for the Orb of Deception toy to sell on the auction house. This takes me roughly around about nine minutes in order to complete, and in nine minutes, that just works out really well for a gold farm that literally took me no time at all. There are a couple of little tricks and and stuff when it comes to what's farming this up, especially when it comes to getting around the smoke clouds. I just use the mobs to launch me over the walls and it just works to in reducing my time and just getting around the smoke that slows your character down beyond belief because it's quite annoying. Other than that, let's go over towards another one, which is my Razor Fang Crawl. 
Now, Razor Vane Crawl, I, I'm gonna stay a transmog farm here because this transmog farm is by far one of the faster selling ones. For me, it just sells really well, especially things like the Sword of Decay from Razor Vane Crawl and Fizen's old great sword. It just works out really well for gaining a decent amount of gold, especially with other items such as like the Slag Hammer. Those ones tend to sell really fast. And overall, in the grand scheme of Transmog, I find that these ones sell the most and the fastest. And yeah, I'm, a, I'm pretty big into farming up Transmog. So yeah, Raise Fen Crawl works. And uh, yeah, that's why I've put it on this list for reliable gold. Following on to that, we have the Siege of Orgrimmar. I don't fail to do this every single week. I make sure I do this one all the time. This is because it has a chance of netting me on a baseline level one mobs, 70,000 gold at this current rate. I can see this on my screen right now. For the Gooey Sharling, the Dropler of the Asherage, the Blackfuse Bombling, and Kovok. Blackfuse Bombling is the easiest to get a hold of, and it's currently selling around about 21,000 gold. That's pretty dang good especially for all of that. And what's even better with this gold farm is these pets actually sell relatively fast in the grand scheme of things. Especially the Blackfuse Bombling, Kovok, and the Droplet of Yasharaj. The Gooey Sharling, not so much, but other than that, three out of four sell relatively fast for battle pets. That just works out really well. And with that being said, I like to boost them to 25 to increase the amount of gold I've actually got because the Blackfuse Bombing is like a 10% drop chance for that pet and the rest of them are like 4% so it's quite hard to get a hold of these. But when it comes towards the Siege of Orgrimmar I just find this to be one of the best gold farms out there for gaining reliable gold through battle pets for a high gold value. It just works and yeah that's why it's on this list for my 10 reliable gold farms that I like doing. Following on to this, I have my last and final one, which is the Dark Heart Thicket Farm for Dreamleaf. I make sure to have rank three in Dreamleaf in order to maximize the amount of Bloods of Sogaris and the Dreamleaf I actually gain. I also pop a Dark Moon Firewater Potion. They have seemingly fixed the old bug when it comes towards the instant loots with the herbalism. However, still takes you like rough still takes you roughly around about 30 minutes in order to complete this, unless you're doing it on a speed set. However, I'm able to pull in more gold per hour than I would farming Dreamleaf in the, in the zone of Valshara. And for 30 minutes, it actually works out quite well for a gold hourly rate. So if I don't base it off of the hourly lockout and I just base it off the time spent, then 30 minutes works out really well for me as I can get double the amount than I would with two hours of gold farming in that zone. So it just works incredibly well. Following on to that, that's my list of the 10 most reliable gold farms for me. And I would like to know what your ones are. Please put them in the comment section down below. Other than that, have an awesome rest of the day and I shall see you in the next video, which will be soon. <music>